love-hate relationship with seasonal tags because every time it's, it's both super useful and super boring and cliche. Hi guys, I'm Marie Meliora and I welcome you to my channel. Today we're talking spring fragrances. I decided to kind of stray away a little bit from kind of the, the beaten path a little bit because to me all of those beautiful early flowers and like blooming trees it's all beautiful and the cherry blossoms and all that good stuff but to me personally and in my memory it's mostly the latter um the the more mature and warm spring fragrances uh where i'm from and i was born and raised in the north the at least half of spring we like, for god's sake we'll get we could get snowfalls in may back back there in the north of russia so all of my olfactory memories about early spring are mostly the kind of mineral and austere smells of melting ice there are a lot of there are a lot of smells and scents to that bareness and almost like sad and melancholic nothingness where when you're waiting for the first blooms and like first leaves to show so i decided to focus on that i know that spring can look and feel very different in different parts of the world but i want to honor that very fragile moment of very very early spring when it's neither here or there early spring fragrances for me could not exist without l'artisan parfumeur Amour Nocturne. So Amour, like I will try to say it with more of like an English accent, um, Amour Nocturne is a, I think now you can say limited edition. It was a collection by L'Artisan Parfumeur uh, where they had a few quite um, unusual combinations. I think there is On the Sensuelle, there is Hot Volt, Alt Voltage and a few other things. So Amour Nocturne to me came to my life when I was looking for the best milk throth scent. Not half and half, not cream, not mousse, not mm, condensed milk, none of that. It's, it's very easy to find kind of like this vanillin, mm, vanilla milk or any sweeter versions of that in the modern perfumery like there are a lot of creamy options a lot of a lot of the times they come with tuberos which unfortunately gives me a headache but when we're talking about fresh milk i was fortunate enough in my childhood to actually drink milk straight out of a cow and to that is such a different kind of milk <laughs> compared to what buy in the store however in terms of the actual richness density and even taste fresh milk straight out of the cow um, has very unique properties and I was struggling to find anything that is remotely close to actual milk and I found it. I found it here. So Amour Nocturne in essence is milk plus gunpowder. To me I don't really feel gunpowder as, as what it it's named I mostly feel it as some kind of like black peppery spice so it's just something that a little bit irritates your nose kind of prickles out but it's such a unique contrasting combination with lightness soothness almost kind of like the foaminess of fresh milk mmm is so delightful another hidden gem that it's available from Sandbird, and that's where that's where i actually got most of the artiste perfumes that i have truly amazing very contemporary niche house i know that it's very hard to navigate the landscape because new uh new perfume brands are popping up every day and it's very hard to tell where you're gonna land with them is it gonna be yet another um, kind of like uh, riding the hype of perfumes sort of having their second birth they're becoming more and more popular now partially thanks to perfume reviewers on YouTube I hope the industry will actually recognize soon enough how much um, social media and people who pioneer 
different brands and who support all the fragrance community and the fragrance community online in general is like I would say 90% responsible for perfumes having sort of a renaissance in our culture. Anyway, very hard to navigate the landscape of new and existing niche brands. So I actually find it especially, it's especially commendable that Sandbird as a service does invite a lot of well-known and really great niche brands to participate in their program. One of the brands that I rarely hear about, and this is truly worth paying attention to, especially if you are curious about this very cerebral, intellectual, contemporary, conceptual brands that make perfumes, Arkeist is top-notch. Most of their perfumes are kind of a little bit, I wouldn't say dry, but they are very thoughtful. When I smell them, I feel like I'm reading a dissertation in a, in, in a way, but not in a way that it's boring or too hard to understand. It's just very well researched, very well blended, very tastefully combined together. So the one that I think goes perfectly for the early spring, for the bareness of the land, uh, is Archist the Architects Club. To me, not actually, let me refresh my memory. The Archist Architects Club, as I told you, is available as Sandbird, which I really appreciate. Otherwise, I would never probably even try that brand. Oh. The Architects Club is has this quiet, a little bit of a dusty pencil behind your ear feel to me. I actually want to read you the description of the brand because I find it gives a very right kind of a little fantasy in mind how to how to experience it. A group of architects gather for cocktails at Mayfair's smartest Art Deco smoking room as they settle in the warm interior of dark woods and velvet. London's bright young thing burst in, frosted martinis in hand, surrounded by a cloud of laughter, white smoke, and fine vanilla. Perfecto. This kind of perfume brief, this kind of little fantasy, it's truly well delivered in this scent. I like the quiet sophistication that doesn't border on being dated or too vintage or too heavy or too cloistered. The perfume still has this kind of light-hearted weight like it's it's not very heavy it's 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 almost like a little cloud that very quickly just dissipates in space it's not bright it's not thin it's just again it's very i like i like souffle as the best texture and density description of most of these perfumes because this is how i perceive early spring the, this this very delicate balance of old and you and the feeling the acute sensation of nothingness beautiful i couldn't i couldn't describe it better myself the architects club is available on sandbird and i highly recommend you actually try the archis brand not sponsored by the way though i wish sandbird send me an email um really like that I have an opportunity to try these perfumes because actually trying to get them uh, turns out to be a notable challenge in the United States. So really appreciate that I can get all of their Kiss perfumes in, in, decent, uh, in decent sized bottles for real cheap. The third one that I want to talk about is Shippers. So the moth, you know, the patchouli, the mossy, a little bit of a bitter herbal scent, those I feel in all of their green glory transition better into later spring. Again, when we're talking about the brown, gray, black, white nothingness of bare land, I do prefer my shippers to be a little bit more suaded, a little, a little more powdery, 
maybe even, fl um, you know, like dusted with flour. The fragrance that delivers that description to the tea is Bottega Veneta or de Velours. So here we're observing sort of the classic um, put together kind of American minimalism shipper with a rounding addition of kind of this kind of velvety suede leather. You know what I mean? It, it becomes less bright compared to the classic Bottega Veneta. It becomes a little bit more subdued and a little bit more, yeah, like it's like suede. It's the feeling of suede, this cozy, expensive, quiet sophistication. Love it. So this is my choice of shipper for the early spring. Next one, I want to talk about subtle, seductive, yet very subtle mosques. And the first one that I think deserves way more hype than it gets these days is the mosques by Narcisa Rodriguez. Uh, they, Narcisa Rodriguez is the king of mosques. Like, his mask bases are so recognizable, so cult, uh, yet they have a trillion of versions of their signature masks for any occasion or any season. So I find that their Eau de Toilette, uh, Narciso by Narciso Rodriguez, or in, you know, like, casually called Black Cube, is the perfect one for early spring. Because this mask is a little bit... Let me my memory because this one is a little bit is not as zesty and it's as as other forms or like even the classic Narcissa Rodriguez I would I would call the classic the pink one is way heavier dirtier and in a way grabbier this Narcissa Rodriguez is lighter a little bit more gardenia floral, so it's elevated by the white florals, yet they are still there somewhere on the background. We all know that gardenia and white florals can also be super sweet, super heavy, super dominating. This is not the case. These are the watercolor painting of white florals and gardenia. Nothing overpowering, nothing too animalic or inappropriately sensual, so to speak. This is like this, the, the seductiveness of a silk blouse that just drapes the body. I absolutely love it. And again, it's such delicate yet sophisticated sensuality that I love, love for early spring. All right, another one. It, like talking about sensual quiet masks, our conversation would be pointless if we didn't talk about another cult classic that I think is unfairly forgotten. This is Bulgari, um, or Bulgari, I guess probably Bulgari, Jasmine Noir. They have, again, probably five to seven flankers of this, so this is classic Jasmine Noir Auto Parfum. Yeah, that's it. Not Splendida, not any of the other things. This is classic, just me noir or de parfum. This the the sensual skin-like soothing seduction of this very quiet scent is hard to describe. And even though it's called jasmine, it has nothing to do with screaming jasmines of Alien by Terry Mugler or uh, bright and optimistic jasmines of Jo Malone or other sort of a summery white floral bouquets. This is so, such a different story. To me, Bulgari Jasmine Noir, it's like the silk cami of all jasmine fragrances. It's, it's worth trying, but I warn you, the, the appeal of it is hidden and opens up with time. This is one of the perfumes that doesn't have kind of the shelf appeal, you know, like the rack uh, appeal that you, you just whiff it, it's like, oh, it's so great, I'm gonna buy it. It might, some people say they don't even feel it from the first sniff. 
it's that quiet and kind of wrapped it's like a like an invisible secret that only grows and blossoms as long as it lands on your skin and you give it time to develop so i can't i can't call it similar to any of those those molecular perfumes that are also people describe that a lot of them can't even smell them you know the molecule number one and and yada 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 this definitely is a proper fragrant bouquet based on very quiet very sensual skin like musk and jasmine but this is unlike any as i said it's unlike any jasmine fragrances i ever tried and it's really worth trying and giving it time it also oddly enough perfect for the modern times of you know frequent quarantines and stay at home and working from home cases because it is not screaming it doesn't have a lot of silage but it does kind of like create an incredibly alluring little coating on your skin so highly recommend you to try jasmine noir by bulgari and the last mask that I would say is a little bit more bright, a little bit more youthful in a way. The Liquid Illusion by Juliet Has a Gun. This is a boutique line by Juliet Has a Gun, uh, which is way more expensive than their general line. I don't quite get why, because most of the perfumes in this line that are tried are eat, like much, much quieter uh, than their usuals. Well, maybe that's the reason. Maybe this type of sophistication is really not considered mainstream, but I wish all perfumes and the stores had that kind of profiles. Maybe not smelled exactly like this, but they were as nuanced and sophisticated as the boutique line by Juliet has a gun. The Liquid Illusion, sprayed here. The bouquet here is so sophisticated that I had to actually look up the notes to help me navigate the layers of how it opens. So the top notes are heliotropine and almond. I was wondering what was that note that was kind of making it softer because Juliet has a gun, their signature musk bases are so zesty and grabby that I actually can't quite wear, enjoy their perfumes because of that. But their Lux line, uh, or boutique line, so to speak, is much, much softer, though it still grabs your skin. It's, they, they have surprisingly long longevity to how quiet they seem at the beginning. So I think the, the almonds, the, the nutty notes in here, they are the ones who kind of wrap up this mask and kind of pull it back to something a little bit more gourmand, a little bit more yummy, so to speak, but just just a, a tad. It's I wouldn't call this a almond-centric perfume, but I think I get it now, yeah. Uh, the heart notes contain Iris Absolute, Iron, interesting, um, Iracine and Tuberose Absolute. Tuberose. What? Well, that's a that's a surprise to me. I actually I'm very sensitive. I would say hypersensitive to tuberose, and I get almost immediate headache from any perfume that has heavy tuberose in the heart. But that hasn't happened here yet. I've been wearing it for quite some time. I think I already got it down to fifteen. Yeah, I think I used up over fifteen milliliters of that, and to this day. Until I discovered that it contains tuberose, I never smelled it. Well, maybe there's some difference between the tuberose absolute, as they listed here, and like other ways to to add tuberose um, to the fragrances or like other substances. I don't know. Base notes: tonka bean, siam benzoin, dry umber, and musks. Yeah, I think the presence of iris almond, uh, the the dry amber, tonka bean, make this type of musk very subdued. It's 
it's a kind of sparkle in somebody's eye while they seem so nonchalant and, and withdrawn. It's like a hidden clue that that teases you with sensuality while you can't quite figure out where is it coming from. What a teaser! <laughs> well, heavily recommend you to check it out, especially, especially if you can find it on sale somewhere online because full price these are painfully expensive, just painfully. So... Thank <laughs> you.